Hi everyone, this is a new video series I'm just starting where I'm gonna try and build a real startup using Python and JavaScript. And this startup is gonna be based on this idea I have for a new app for learning languages. I'm gonna explain more about it later, uh, but initially it's gonna be a website and then later an app for improving your writing skills in any language you wanna learn, whether it's Japanese, English, or French. Anyway, in this series, uh, my goal is to show you sort of the whole process of trying to build a startup. Uh, so that includes stuff like designing the app, coding, marketing the app, uh, monetizing the app eventually, and maybe even asking for investments at some point. I'm also planning to make this whole thing an open source project so that you'll be able to see every single line of code I'm gonna write. Okay, and in this first video in the series, I'm gonna explain uh, what I'm going to build exactly and what the initial version of this app is gonna look like, uh, what I've done so far for this business. And then uh, I'm gonna show you how I set up Django on my computer right here. So Django is of course something called a web framework uh, that's based on Python. Okay, so let's get started. Uh, first of all, let me just quickly explain what I'm gonna build exactly. Uh, by the way, the reason I wanted to build this particular product and not anything else is because I noticed that there aren't a lot of good resources for improving your writing skills in the foreign language you're trying to learn. You know, there are a lot of other good resources uh, for improving your uh, reading, listening, and speaking skills, but not so much for writing. And that's why I wanted to, you know, uh, build this particular product. Uh, so let's say you're learning Japanese. Then the way this app is gonna work is you're gonna first uh, write some stuff in Japanese on this app and a random native uh, Japanese speaker on this app, let's say like me, is gonna take a look at what you wrote and then fix it for you. And if he's learning, let's say French, then you know random uh, French native speakers are gonna take a look at what he wrote and then they'll fix it for him. So that way everyone will be able to improve their writing skills in the languages they are trying to learn. Actually, there's already a similar website for this called Lang8. But the main problem with this website is that first of all, it's kind of hard to use. And secondly, uh, they recently closed down new registrations. So it's pretty much unusable at this point. So basically, you know, I wanna make a better version of what they were trying to do in the first place. Okay, so let me explain how the initial version of this new app is gonna work. Initially, this app is gonna be based on Twitter just to make the initial version really simple to build. But eventually, you'll be able to use this app without using Twitter at all. Anyway, let me show you what this app is gonna look like with this wireframe I created. Uh, I'm thinking of calling this application Edit Dojo, by the way, because we're gonna be editing each other's posts. So when you open this app or website, you know, you'll see uh, some explanation about how it's gonna work. And then you'll see this button that says sign up with Twitter. So you'll be able to sign up with your Twitter account. So like I said earlier, this is just the initial version or the MVP of this product. So eventually you'll have buttons like sign up with your email address and sign up with your Facebook account. Uh, sorry about my voice, by the way. I think my throat is not in the best condition. Uh, anyway, after you sign up with Twitter, you'll see this simple registration form to finish your registration. So you just need to say, I wanna improve uh, my writing skills in you know, Japanese, let's say, and I'm fluent in English, say. And then you click submit to finish your registration process. And after you finish your registration process, you will start seeing other people's tweets in your native language, let's say English right here. So let's take a look at this person's tweet right here. Uh, it's by at YK Dojo. And he says, the breakfast I had today, today was awesome. So there are some spelling errors here. Uh, when you, you know, find mistakes like that, you can just click this edit button and then edit this tweet for this person, just like that. And then if you wanna improve your writing skills, let's say in Japanese, you just need to go into your Twitter account and start tweeting in Japanese. And once you tweet, you know, other people are gonna see your tweet and once they fix it, uh, you're gonna get a tweet from this account I created at Edit Dojo so that you know, you know, when someone else fixes your tweets. Okay, so that's the idea of this app. Uh, now, let me just show you what I've done so far for this business. Uh, first of all, as you can see right here, I created, you know, this Twitter account at Edit Dojo. 
I think I'm going to change the profile picture later. And then I set up this waiting list for this app uh, where if you're interested in using this app at some point in the future, uh, you can type in the languages you want to learn and the languages you're fluent in as well as your email address so that I can let you know when the app is ready for your particular language combination. And then after that, I went to this website called Namecheap to get a domain for this project. I got uh, editdojo.io for this project and there's actually no particular reason why I use this particular website, Namecheap. You know, I could have used anything else, uh, but it's just that I'm used to using Namecheap. And then after all of that, I set up Django on my computer. So let me show you how I did that. And like I said earlier, Django is of course a web framework that's based on Python. And that's what I'm going to use in this project. Now, if you try following this part of the video on your computer, and if you have any trouble with it, feel free to ask questions on the Slack channel I set up for this. It's called Edit Dojo Dev. Uh, you can find a link to the Slack group at csdojo.io slash edit right here. You'll also be able to find the source code of this project uh, right here on the same page. And I'm going to put a link to the GitHub page later uh, right here. Okay, so the first thing I did uh, when I got started on this project is I just searched for Django Hello World because you know I wanted to get started with just with a Hello World uh, app. And then uh, with this search query, I ended up finding this book called Django for Beginners. And uh, it turns out to be actually pretty good. So that's what I'm going to follow in this video. Uh, if you want to find the book for yourself, you can do that at csdojo.io slash dj. Or uh, they also have a few free chapters of this book at djangoforbeginners.com. Okay, so following this book, uh, the first thing I did was I installed Python 3, uh, something called pipenv. And I'm going to explain what pipenv is later. And here, I'm going to show you how I did that on a Mac because I'm using a Mac. But if you use you know, Linux or Windows, uh, I recommend just taking a look at this book to see how you can install them. Actually, the part about installing all of that is available for free at djangoforbeginners.com. Anyway, once you install Python 3 and pipenv on your computer, you can just skip to this time in this video. OK, so the first thing I did on my Mac is I installed Homebrew which is what's called a package manager for Mac. A package manager is basically something that allows you to install different applications easily on your computer. Uh, I went to Homebrew's homepage at brew.sh, and then I found this command. I copied it, and then I pasted it in terminal. So on Mac, you can just uh, press command space to open Spotlight, and then type in terminal, and then open the terminal app. So once you open this app, you can just uh, paste that command, and then it's going to start installing Homebrew for you. So again, if you're using Windows or Linux, this step is going to be different. So follow the book I mentioned earlier instead. Anyway, if you're on the Mac, uh, once you install Homebrew, you can just type in brew install Python 3 to install Python 3 uh, on your computer. So you know, basically uh, type that command and then press enter to install Python 3. After that, in terminal, try typing in Python 3 space dash dash version and then press enter to see uh, what version of Python 3 you have on your computer. If you see Python 3.7, that's great because that's what I have here. But if you see uh, Python 3.6 or Python 3.8 or you know something similar, uh, that should be fine. So don't worry if what you see is not exactly the same as what I see here. Okay, so once you have Python 3 on your environment, the next step is to install something called pipenv. Uh, pipenv helps you create something called a virtual environment for Python. I'm not going to go into the details of what it is exactly. Uh, so if you're curious, I'd recommend just you know taking a look at the book I mentioned earlier at csdojo.io slash dj. Anyway, to install pipenv, we're going to use pip3, which Homebrew should have installed for you when you install Python 3. And pip3 is a package manager for Python. So just to quickly recap, Homebrew is a package manager for Mac, and it's for different kinds of applications. And Homebrew allows you to install pip3, 
which is also a package manager, but it's only for Python packages, including pipm. Anyway, to install pipm, uh, which allows you to create a virtual environment for Python, just run pip3 space install space pipm, and then press enter. And that's it for the setup for now. Uh, in summary, you know, after this process is complete, you should have installed Python 3 and pipm. And you know, like I said earlier, the process is going to be different for Windows and Linux. So if you have any trouble going through this process, uh, you should join our Slack group so that you can get help from others. Anyway, after this process, you're actually uh, ready to create your first project with Django. Uh, the first thing you'll need to do for that is you'll need to create a folder somewhere, uh, let's say on desktop for now. Uh, so open terminal, you might have already uh, have it opened, and then uh, type in cd space tilde slash desktop if you're using a Mac. And this is a Unix command. So something like this should work on a Mac and Linux, but on Windows, you might need to use a slightly different command, or you might need to install an application that allows you to use the Unix commands on Windows. Again, there is more information about that on the book I mentioned earlier. Okay, so you can read uh, cd tilde slash desktop as change directory or go to uh, this directory desktop within tilde, which stands for the home directory. And once you run this command, you should see desktop right here. And that means that we're in this directory right now, desktop. And once you're on desktop, uh, run this command ls. This command uh, shows all the files and folders within that directory. Uh, right now on my desktop, I have three uh, or two folders and one file, uh, csojo desktop, heyyk desktop, and django for beginners, uh, hyphen export.pdf. So that's exactly what you should see right here. csojo desktop, heyyk desktop, and another file right here. Okay, the next step after that is you need to create a folder on desktop called edit dojo. Uh, there are two ways of doing it. One is a simpler way, just go to desktop and then create a folder like you usually do. You know, click, right click, and then click new folder. But actually you can do the same thing in terminal. Uh, you can do that by typing in mkdir space edit dojo. Uh, this says make directory or make folder uh, that's going to be called edit dojo. Once you press enter here, it should have been created. Uh, you can check that just by going to desktop right here or typing in um, ls. And it should show this new folder that you just created, edit dojo. And once you create that folder, uh, you need to go into this folder by typing in cd or change directory space edit dojo. If it works, you should see Edit Dojo right here to show that you're in this directory right now. And this folder, Edit Dojo, is going to be where we're going to put all our code uh, that we're going to create later. Uh, the next step is to install Django with pipenv. Uh, you can do that by typing in pipenv install Django equal equal 2.1. Uh, this says use pipenv to install Django whose version is going to be 2.1. And before you run this command, uh, make sure that you're in the folder that you just created, Edit Dojo. So once you type it in, press Enter, and this should create a virtual environment for you uh, with Django installed. And here's the reason why you need to create a virtual environment here using pipm. It's because the virtual environment for this particular project specifies which particular version of Django you want to use for this particular project. So if you have two projects, you'll be able to create two separate virtual environments, uh, one for each. And that way, you can say something like, I want to use Django 2.1 for project A and Django 2.2 for project B. And that's basically what virtual environments are for. Anyway, to make sure this command worked, you can just type in ls here. Uh, and you should see these two files, pip file and pip file .lock. Uh, If this step didn't work, I suggest that you close down this terminal window and then you know open the terminal window again, go to uh, desktop by typing in 
uh, tilde slash desktop, and then go to the same folder, edit dojo, and just repeat the same thing. Okay, once you see those two files in the current folder, pip file and pip file.lock, you're ready to go to the next step, which is creating a new Django project. Uh, you can do that by first going into your virtual environment by typing in pip m shell. Uh, you should see uh, something like this. It might be slightly different, but if you see something like uh, parentheses, edit dojo, and maybe something after that, that means that you're in the virtual environment. And you need to be in this virtual environment to be able to use the particular version of Django that you installed earlier. So once you're in the virtual environment, uh, type in django-admin start project, edit dojo underscore project, and then dot. This means uh, use this command, django-admin, to start a new project, which is going to be called edit dojo underscore project, and then don't forget the dot after that, and this just says create this project in the current directory dot. And once you press enter, this is going to create a new Django project for us. After that, if you run ls, you should see something like this. You will notice that uh, there are two folders, two files that have been created, manage.py and edit dojo project, which I think is a folder. After that, let's start up our Django server. You can do that by typing in python uh, space manage.py and then run server. Once you press enter, you should see something like this. And this says starting development server at this URL. So copy this URL, go to your browser, and just paste that URL here. If everything works, you should see a window like this. It says the install worked successfully. Congratulations. OK, so that's the process I went through to set up Django. You know, typically, setting up the right environment is the hardest part of starting any project. So I think it's really important to uh, be able to get help from others uh, as you go through the process. So again, if you need help, uh, join our Slack channel by going to csdojo.io slash edit. Uh, you know, if you have some experience with this, I'd really appreciate it if you could uh, help others there too. I mean, I'm going to do my best to help everyone there too. Uh, but you know, my time is limited and I don't have that much experience with uh, Windows and Linux. So I'd really appreciate that. Uh, you'll also be able to see the source code on GitHub on this page too. And like I said earlier, if you're interested in uh, using this app at some point in the future, you can just go to csdojo.io slash wait to sign up for my waiting list. Also, if you want to check out the book I mentioned earlier, uh, check it out by going to chdojo.io slash dj or just check out the free chapters by going to uh, djangoforbeginners.com Okay, anyway, in the next video, I'm going to show you how I built a Hello World project with Django. Thank you as always for watching my videos and let me know if you have any questions you know, either on our Slack channel or in the comment section below. Okay, I'll see you guys in the next video.